what's up guys thought i'd started a video here i'm finally feeling better i was sick the first couple days this week happy thursday to you hope you're having an awesome day um it is now uh almost halfway through april uh we are halfway through april so april 15th so i thought i'd do another video on uh what versions of linux do i use and what do i recommend so that's not an easy answer so we're going to get into that right now so <clears throat> Let's open up my virtual box, which is what I use to run my virtual machines. You've seen in other videos where I've talked about virtual box. Um, basically, you know, you want, need to be comfortable with the version of Linux you're running. Um, so a good way to get started, if you don't want to mess with installing virtual machines or you don't have a good enough computer to run virtual machines, you can go to the Windows Store, if you have Windows. Um, you can go to the Search for Linux and type in Linux and you will get several uh, things for Linux uh, and you can use the Windows subsystem for Linux so this is uh, Ubuntu this is Kali uh, the only downside is you cannot run both of these along with VirtualBox it's gotta be one or the other so if you're gonna run VirtualBox then you gotta run VirtualBox if you're gonna run this you can run this and you have to go and do a couple things you gotta first go into features turn Windows features on or off and you got if you're running like me as a standard user, you can put your password in, and you're gonna see a screen like this. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna say, I'm gonna go turn on Hyper-V. I'm gonna turn on the Windows subsystem for Linux. You're gonna tick this on. And if you want some other things like PowerShell, um, or you want uh, Windows hypervisor, you also want to enable Hyper-V. That's another thing. So that you can create the virtual machines and be able to run them. So those are the two you need to do. Hit OK. Once that's done, it'll install some stuff and then it'll ask you to reboot. So from there, then you'll be able to just open up a start menu and type in uh, command prompt and you'll be able to run Linux. So I have uh, quickly also one of the program I want to give you. Um, if you're not familiar with it, this is the Windows terminal. It is actually an open source uh, terminal. Windows, Windows uh, terminal has not been that great or the, the Windows hasn't really had a terminal. So it was in preview or beta for a while so you go over here to the windows store and basically you go and download it and uh then you'll be able to open up multiple tabs so you can have virtual machines in one tab you can have cloud in another so um this is the program right here windows terminal fast modern efficient productive so they're really going all in on linux to make it kind of mold together and really be uh, useful see they got this fancy graphic right here powershell command prompt ubuntu they want you to run it all from right here so it looks really great it's it works well i think uh it's something you know everyone should kind of mess with and download so you can do cool things like make your uh terminal look like this like kind of acrylic -y. you can run multiple uh windows and a kind of a split screen kind of setup so you could have windows in one uh, virtual machine in another and then cloud in another so really great i uh, definitely recommend it check it out uh, you can also edit it like if you want the bleeding edge you can go to github it's only 30 megabytes so it's not a huge program i know it's windows i get it but there's some other screenshots of running linux commands on there um powershell preview what is that that's a new one i'm not seeing this one yet so i try to throw in some new things uh when i find them so built on .NET, open source. You know what? Let's get it. Maybe we'll try that in another video. Install. So this is, we're calling this the Ethical Hacking Series. I think this is episode five. Uh, but again, you can really, there's not one necessarily best way to go through all this. You can go through and start it with virtualization Linux. This is a good way to go. So, so I've got my virtual box open right here. I'm going to move myself to the other side of the screen so you can see better. And so what do we got here? We've got, I'm going to brighten this up a little bit because my, I just noticed my, uh, it's a little bit not quite so bright. Up up the gamma a little bit, it's not so dark. That's a little better. I think that's a little better anyway. So, so now we've got that. What are we going to do? We're going to go and we're going to go to, um, Virtual box, and we're going to open up the uh, 
No, it's actually that made it worse. I'm learning people. I'm trying to get better at this stuff. I know not doing it in the recording is probably not a good idea, but I'm just, you know, I want to get a video out. You know, I'm all about the content. I'm not about necessarily having perfection all the time. Because it's more about the content than about perfection. I mean, that's all the all the big YouTubers say that. You got to go. You got to enjoy it. And I really don't like the way OBS is about some of its filters. You got to really click and drag and it's like, oh, I hope that's better. Okay, good. All right. So, so I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to open up. Uh, well, Ubuntu is one I use. I use no site. I have other ones here. I have CentOS. So these are all you can do. go download them. You can go download the ISO. And you can set them up. Um, we'll open up Brave here real quick. And so we'll open up a new tab. So you can go to Ubuntu. There's Ubuntu.com, which is awesome because they provide free Linux distribution servers. There's just so much stuff there. Um, it's great. So I like Ubuntu a lot. It's a good. Linux distro for what if you're not really big in Linux yet. So you can get enterprise versions, you can get developer versions, community, download, there's IoT, Internet of Things versions, so much out there. Um, if you want to migrate to the cloud, Ubuntu is a great way to do that. So let's go back and we're going to go ahead and look at another distro of Linux. We have uh, Remnux. Remnux is like a Forensics reverse engineering designed version of Linux. It's designed to kind of help you do uh, analysis of malware. So it comes with a lot of tools out of the box. It's a great, uh, great program. Uh, let's see. My internet's running kind of slow today. So there's Remnux, a Linux toolkit for malware analysis. So it's it's a, just a cool, uh, you can download a distribution or distro, and you can download the OVA file and import it right into VirtualBox. You can also add it to an existing uh, system. So you got Linux already, like Ubuntu, you can just go download it. And it's got uh, even a version for containers. So you can run it in Docker if you want to. So let's go over to it, and let's, oh, it's already open, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. Remnox version seven. I was doing an update, so I'm going to clear the screen. And so we're going to see what we got here. We're going to close this terminal out. And what you kind of see from the beginning, I was running uh, NSA's uh, Ghidra tools here. You've got a start menu. you got kind of, uh, you can open things similar to the GNOME. You can see all the applications that you're running. So there's, there's a lot of tools here. So again, I'm not going to make an expert on each one of these tools. That'll probably be for another video. But... There's debuggers, there's uh, Burp Suite for analyzing web applications, there's tweaks, there's all kinds of stuff. Of course, it's got a menu, so you can work it you know, from the start menu. You can do all this right here. Um, you can you know, open up folders, runs just like uh, any other distribution of Linux. So you can create folders. So, but again, most of your stuff is probably going to be done from the command line. So it's got a database, it's got Visual Studio Code, it's got Wireshark, it's got just, just all the stuff you might need. Calculator, but nothing too much. Again, you can install other things, but it's a forensics toolkit Linux. It's designed to do malware analysis or just, you know, maybe have a Linux environment to learn in. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And so I'm going to save the state because I want to leave it, uh, be able to run it later without having to restart it. So it's going to take this. It's going to save the state where I was at so I can pick back up here later uh, and not have to worry about uh, clicking through everything again. So that's great. Takes a little bit of time, but that's that's perfectly fine. Let's go back over to my other one. I have another VM already running. Oh, a sec. Oh, a sec. Let's go to the website first. Actually, we'll do it from within the, uh, from the VM. That's fine. It's like it's got a new notification. So powered by OSX, it's got a kind of a cool little graphic um, applications. It's got most everything in the sundry that has a firewall. It's got Etsy Linux, 
Um, it's got a software updater, so if you want to update all the software, which periodically you're going to want to do because OSSEC is designed to be a host-based intrusion detection system. So it's going to go out, it's going to get the list of updates, and that's going to let me know. It looks like there's quite a lot of them. The device mapper 41 updates, not not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those and let those go. And we'll minimize that while we're doing the thing. So if I want to open up uh you know it's got internet browser, it's got Firefox, it's got clocks, it's got a text editor, it's got a programming, so you can program an Emacs, it's got a uh, image maker, so the sundry. That's kind of where the tools are. Uh, you got the firewall. Also, a lot of the stuff on here gets run in the browser. So if you want to run uh, what's called an elk stack, you can run that in here too. There's the firewall. I'm not going to I'm necessarily get in that. Probably save that for another video. I'm just showing you kind of a overview. So updates for downloading. It's testing the changes. That go. So the firewall daemon's probably not running, so that's probably why it wouldn't start. Um, there's different utilities that I might need. So image viewer, there's passwords, remote desktop viewer. So but let's go into system tools. Terminal. That's where most of your stuff's gonna be at, right? So I can change the color of my terminal if I want to, um, make it you know, a little bit different. Change the encoding. So I was like to when I get into any new distribution, I'll change the, you know, the color. I'll change the just you know the shape. If I want to change the, if I want it blinking or not blinking. So use built-in schemes, or I can do dark theme. Who doesn't like dark theme? Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks nice. So that's probably not going to show up too well on video. So let's go ahead and uh, change it to. Actually, no, that might be okay. Let me go ahead and zoom in. So you can see a little bit more. So again, I can run uh, certain things from here. Um, close a couple of windows. So OSSEC, the way it works is it's basically a um, there's a control script that can start, stop, configure, or check the status of everything. So what you're probably going to want to do, you're going to go into getting started with OSSEC. Um, it's got everything from log monitoring, file integrity checking, uh, root kit detection. There's, there's a lot, so uh, it's, it's got VMware, it's got firewalls, it's got a manager for managing uh, OSSEC deployments. If I want to make it uh, start automatically, I have to go into the uh, I have to do the I have to give it the path because it doesn't have the path by default in this distro. So I'm going to check the enabling. I don't know what the actual default password was. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's underscore. Uh oh, so this is the default password. For OSSEC. I always forget it because when you want to install it, that's the default password. Username is root. 
We gotta do that again. And that time it worked. So now it's uh enabled. So we can also do service. That'll, that'll enable to start up so service status. So I didn't not only make it, uh, so it's failed to start, not found. So it could be because it's doing an update. And I have to go into the OSSEC folder. They got agentless. They've got, uh, so we'll probably do a future video on this, but there's, this is kind of where all your stuff is. Um, let's see if I still have it in the browser. Let's open up Firefox. I'll take a second because we're running a couple of sets. So this is the second dis uh, distribution I, I run just on a on occasion. Not all the time. A lot of times when I'm teaching. So it probably has some windows that were open last time. So it's got uh, Cerebro, which is the brains. It's got Cabana for visualizing the stuff that goes into it. And then it's got the... Uh, Little, this elastic search it takes a little bit to run, especially if it's doing an update. These updates are going, but slowly. So it's a great, um, there, there's a plus version too that has a lot more features. This is the free one. So it says did not load properly, but this is actually loading. So it's telling me process, CPU, uptime. So we now have a server node running. So we could actually take this. And use this to uh, monitor other systems with. So host IDS for everyone, multi-platform. So it's got all the things that you can do. And it runs on most operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac OS. So no reason not to check it out. Give it a, give it a, a you know, if you like it, great. Lots of tutorials out there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I also run Kali quite a bit. Kali is the pen testing distro of choice for uh, ethical hackers. So Kali is uh, Debian-based Linux, much like uh, Ubuntu. It's basically um, going to give you all the penetration testing tools in one spot. So you don't have to really search for anything. It's all going to be there. So you go download, you got a couple options. You can run it on a laptop. You can run it on a smartphone. You can run it on so many different places. Um, that's It's just awesome. So so go to pick your download style. You can burn it to a, uh, you can get the installer for it. You can download it for a mobile phone. There's uh, virtualized builds for it. So VMware, VirtualBox. And so once you pick the right download, there's a great community. There's actually a free ebook too. You can get the uh, uh, mobile version, Kali NetHunter, which runs on uh, Android devices, Nexus devices, Samsung. They can do the bad USB attack, bad USB attack. And so, very cool, cool little dragon there on the startup. Uh, this is based off of Backtrack Linux. Uh, Backtrack is now kind of defunct or not being updated anymore. So, great, great tools to have. And I'm running off one laptop, all on the same machine. I have two monitors, but I have one laptop uh, that I'm running on right now. Uh, it's a bit of a beefy laptop, so that's why I'm running virtual machines. But you might want to run in non-virtual machines. So it really depends on what your preferences are. Kelly takes a little bit longer to start up than I'd like. I think Parrot runs a little faster. Uh, we may do another video on Parrot, but I want to keep this one uh, under 20 minutes if possible. So once it starts up, it will show you all the things that you can do with it. All the hacking tools, ethical hacking tools, uh, web application tools, pen testing, network scanning, network mapping, 
All right, Cali's open. So this is a new uh, version of Cali that only has a user account that can sudo to root. Doesn't have the root account anymore. So you put in your password, which is just Cali and, and Cali, unless you change it, your username and password. And so it'll take a minute to pop up, and then you'll have the Cali by Offensive Security. It loads the wallpaper in, and then you'll have access to all the tools. See the top left hand corner here, you've got uh, various tools up here. You can click on the little blue square with the dragon. You got a menu bar at the top right, power, cool little wallpaper. All the tools are right here. Information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis. We might do each individual uh, modules of these in, in a future uh, video. Forensics, uh, sniffing attacks, reverse engineering social engineering the art of people hacking so much cool stuff here so that includes my basic versions of linux that i run i guess they're not really so basic but my kind of go-to linux at least right now i have some other honorable mentions like manjaro i like pop os i like ubuntu um, i like nopix linux There's, i like different linux for different reasons i don't love kali for the sake of a daily install os i think parrot's a lot better um, but it's, again, right now, my Parrot VM is not working, so I have to do some work to fix that. So I wanted to say thank you guys for watching. Let's make a push to get uh, get a thumbs up on this video if you liked it. Uh, definitely comment. Let me know what versions of Linux you think should be in the comments below. Let me make know that you, know, you, you want to see more content like this. This is your jam. So thank you so much, and we'll see you guys in the next video.